Again, I'm Paul Corner from Perfect Golf Event, and today we're going to talk about the complete guide to, to your uh, rate to an event, uh, a, a fundraising golf event. I've been doing this for about 16 years and manage a number of events myself. I was in addition to uh, being chief operating officer of Perfect Golf Event, and we interact with we have about six or seven thousand events using Perfect Golf Event, and we get a chance to interact with a lot of organizers. So, our, you know, what we try and do is, is share some of the the educational tips that might help you have a more successful event. So that's what we're going to talk about today. It's a pretty intense session. Um, I'll, I'll tell you a couple quick things. One is there's a lot of content, but I'll be glad to get to the presentation um, afterwards. Number one. Number two, um, if you uh, if you have any questions, you can post them, and I'll stay around at the end of the session. Um, and I'll be glad to answer any questions uh, that you have. So if you need some tips or advice. Um, or you can always set up a private call if you want to talk to me directly. But um, I'll be glad to answer questions at the end. <clears throat> so again, we go kind of quickly. You'll be asked for uh, three questions at the end as, as a survey, and then you'll always say that we went too fast. But I know your time is valuable. That's why I kind of cover the main points, and then I make sure you have a copy of the full presentation, so that way you can refer back to them and, and all the checklists we're going to talk about um, as well. So again. Thank you for attending. So today we're going to talk about planning your golf event and understanding your objectives when you're having a fundraising golf event. Obviously, this is very important. Hopefully, we're going to focus on this today. That is, you want to make sure you organize your event effectively. Second of all, you want to achieve your financial objectives. It's important if you have financial goals, if your organization counts on the financing, a financial raise at the event, you want to reach or exceed those goals. And then you want to build momentum for future events. So you make sure you're setting it up so that your event's successful and then you'll be able to have the event going forward. What we see is if you're having a first year event, if you don't do it effectively, you're not going to have a second year event. But if you can get past the first year with a good format and effective tools and, and do okay, you can make it to the second year and then you have the momentum to have an event that will go on for, for many years. I work with one event at Cornell University. Uh, they've been doing their their event for 64 years so uh, that's a long time but you can establish momentum if you do everything uh, properly if you're planning a golf event what i always say to people is two things one is congratulations and secondly condolences because i don't think anybody who's not done a golf event understands they think oh i just show up we load some carts out people go play golf we come in we have a couple beers everybody goes home that's not what happens when you're planning a golf event. There's so many different elements. I won't read all these because you're going to get it, but there's so many things you have to handle from the committee to the format, to the technology, to the marketing plan, player and sponsorship sales, checklist, volunteers and support, your event day planning. There are just so many elements to having a successful event. And those are your responsibility or the responsibility of those that you have on your committees. So everything, everybody knows that it does take a lot to execute properly. When you're getting started, and on this webinar, I have new people, I have experienced organizers. So if you already know some of the stuff, just be patient. We'll get into the meat of some stuff in a minute. But as you're planning to launch your event, first of all, you got to make sure that you've got the resources in place. I, do you have a strong message on why you're raising money? I'll talk about that in the branding in just a second. Do you have an effective committee? Are you starting with a database of potential players and sponsors? It's very important. You can't start an event just by saying, I'm going to go out to the general public. That doesn't work. You have to have a database of potential people to play. You'll need some startup funds for your deposits and some of your marketing expenses. You'll need, obviously, time to organize and execute an event. You'll need technology, Good, hopefully use a perfect golf event, but you want a website so people can pay and register online securely. And you'll need your marketing plan. So there's a lot of things you have to do to get ready to launch your event. Now, I focus on this a lot, and this is about the message. So it's really important that you have to clarify the message of why you're raising money. <clears throat> Excuse me. For example, I raised money for this group, the backstop. All right, they provide financial assistance to the spouses and the children of police, firefighters, volunteer firefighters, EMTs, who have lost their lives in the, in the, in the line of duty. It's tragic. But it's a very strong and clear message of why they're raising funds. So I always tell people, fine-tune your message so that your people who are out there promoting your event can talk clearly about where the money is going to go. 
So that's really important part of your of your marketing plan. People and players and sponsors have to understand why you're raising money. It's not, I mean, you're going to have a good time, come out and play golf, but where's the money going to go? So that's a strong thing that you can carve out if you have an effective message. I always encourage organizations to have a brand. What I mean a brand is like, do you have an event logo? Have you developed a logo specific to your event? Not just your organization logo, but do you have an event logo? Are you using consistent colors? Uh, do you have a tagline? For example, this is an event I've done for about eight, eight years, and we've used the same logo for the same eight years. It doesn't have a date in there, so we can use it every year. We use the same colors on all our marketing materials and websites and all that. So that people get used to the brand. So even if you're just having one event a year, I like to have a traditional look and feel that people could get used to. You know what it's like. You're driving down the street, and you're looking for coffee, and you can catch the Dunkin' Donuts color on the sign, even without seeing the words Dunkin' Donuts, you can see kind of the colors. Well, that looks like it's going to be a Dunkin' Donuts. So that's going to be a Starbucks. So you want to get some branding done for your event. And you want to, even if you're just applying it to one event a year, you want to have brand. Now, if you've been in my other webinars, you know I always cover this section, which is make sure that you've got your financial goals set up in a, in a place that you can measure them. So this is the template that I use for all my events. And I plug in all my expenses, my revenue from 2022, and then I plug in all my revenue projections for 2023, and I'm very specific. So if I had a putting contest, and I want to say in 2022, we made $1,000 in a putting contest, well, I'm going to put down, let's make $1,250 this year in the putting contest, and then we're going to talk about the committee, okay, how are we going to get to that number? How are we going to increase every year the revenue that we're getting all the way through? So you plug in your revenue numbers. And then on the same template, you can scroll down, you can enter in your expenses. What did you have expenses in last year? And what are your expenses going to be in 2023? And then at the bottom, it's going to automatically total your net revenue. And that way you can look and say, hey, if you're trying to raise $50,000 or $30,000, whatever it is, if that number is not there, then you got to go back up on the spreadsheet and you got to say, okay, it looks like we need to get some more revenue here, or we're going to need to cut our expenses here. So Doing this is a very good thing to do with your committee, especially early in the planning process. I'm going to go back. If you want to copy it, I'm going to tell you where you can get all the checklists afterwards and these templates. So you, you'll have a copy if you want to use it. So just an Excel spreadsheet. You know, you could use and modify it, put your own categories in it. You want, as I mentioned earlier, you've got to have a successful committee. And managing a committee is a very important part of your role as the event organizer. And again, I'm not going to read everything here because I'm going to give you a checklist that you go through with your committee. But it's important now to take the opportunity to add new members to your committee. So if you have a chance to add new people for 2023, do it. Energize your committee. Maybe you can look at people who played in your event last year and came up to you and said, hey, we had a great time. How can I get involved? Well, you can get involved. Why don't you get on my committee? And this is really important. When you're running your committees, it'll be on my checklist in a minute. You always keep them focused on teams and sponsors. I've been in committee meetings. I've come in late, and they've got the menu being passed around, and they're trying to pick the hors d'oeuvres for an event that's coming up five months from now. So I have to stop everything, and I have to go, look, let's focus on it. What's our, how many teams we identify? Who are our potential teams? How many sponsors do we have? Where's the list of potential sponsors? So those are the things that you want to work with with your committee. So I've got a checklist put together. And I'm not going to, again, read this, I'll share the checklist. But there's a, important things here. Besides being a selective, you know, don't accept every applicant. Make sure they understand what's expected of them, that you're going to need some of their time so that you, their people don't say, I'm going to be on our committee, but then you lose them and they don't do anything. Have an agenda. I make sure before my committee meetings. And I have less live committee meetings now because we're all getting used to Zoom. And so I like to have Zoom meetings because we can get them done. No one has to drive across town sit in a room, gossip about what's going on in town, so you waste 20 minutes of the meeting. You can get right into the meeting on Zoom. And you might want to have some subcommittees, like sales and marketing, operations, volunteers, and finance. So you can have one major committee, <coughs> excuse me, but you might have some smaller committees for people to work. If you want, I put everything on my committee plan checklist. And again, I'll tell you how to download this afterwards. It's our new checklist I put together 
because again, I run 12 events and I run it I'm on, at all different committee meetings all the time. Um, and this will just tell you sort of kind of how to prepare yourself so that you can have an effective committee. Because again, successful events have successful committees. And one of the things you're going to want to do with your committee is make sure you're always building that database. Remember I talked about earlier about having a database. So it's important that you have a database of potential players and sponsors. And building that database, you, deal, you build your initial database, but you're always adding to it. You're always looking for new contacts, new people to get in there to promote your event. So you're going to start, you might have past supporters, maybe people who were, were in, uh, did other events with your organization, like a trivia night or a run or a gala. You're going to have past golf participants. You'll have committee members. You're going to ask them for their contacts, your staff, any other supporters that are, that, are, that are willing to share their contacts, anybody you write a check to, like a vendors, referrals. I'll talk about getting referrals in a bit. You're going to ask the golf course if they can give you a database. They probably won't, but they might do an email blast for you out to their group about the event. Um, I live in uh, St. Louis and Clayton, Missouri, and they publish a directory. I mean, how helpful is this? They publish a directory of every business by category in Clayton. And it's about a 30-page book with all the contact information. Well, I just I hired a high school student, and I said, tell you what, I'm going to pay you 20 bucks an hour. Take this thing and put it into my database. So when I'm doing emails, I could be hitting all the businesses in Clayton, Missouri. I mean, that's just simple stuff to help you build your database. And then sometimes if you have time, you can do internet research. You might just go ahead where market you're in and do a search that said new businesses in uh you know, Portland, Maine, new business in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. And then you'll see maybe someone so open a new business. So add them to your database. Maybe you send them a note. Said, hey, I see you're new in town and you're trying to grow your business. I can tell you a great way to meet some people in town. They're going to give you new business. Come to my golf event. So building the database is an ongoing process. And then you want to put everything onto a spreadsheet. So you've got a list of what type of potential player it is. It could be a team or a sponsor, company, the contact, the email, who on your committee members following up, what's their status, any notes you want to have. If you can get their mailing address, that's fine. So you're always feeding the animal. You're feeding the, da the database. So you can, when you do your social media marketing that we'll talk about, you're going out to people and saying, okay, we're having a great event. And let me tell you why you want to be at my golf event. Now, if you're working with the golf course, if you're on the call, you may already have your golf course for, for this year, which is fine. If you haven't done it yet, <clears throat> I'll tell you a couple of tips. But even if you've done it, it's important that you look at the contract that you have and make sure you haven't missed anything. And again, I'm not going to read all this to you because you go to sleep, but I'm going to send this to you and I have a checklist I'll send you as well. But there's a bunch of things you want to look at that when you were looking at the contract and you signed it, you may not have picked up on. So things like saying, hey, am I going to have the golf course to myself the whole time? Or are you going to have other people plan before or after my event? Are there any hidden fees? Any restrictions on where I can put signs and banners? What kind of equipment do you have? Audio, visual, tables. Is there internet access in the registration area? You don't want to get there and not be able to process payments. They have scorecards. What kind of support are they going to give you? This is really important, and a lot of people miss this. Have a rain date. And then post it on your website. So what I do is say, okay, we're playing on September 29th. But if it rains and it's right on the website, we're going to be, the rain date's October 7th. So we're just going to move your registration over to October 7th. It helps you avoid, have a bunch of people asking for refunds. And it also locks in a date with the golf course. Because you may get rain and then you call the golf course and say, what do we do now? And the golf course said, we don't have any dates until next year. So try and get a rain date with the golf course and, and say, look, I, I, do, I want a rain date. If it rains, I want to be able to get my event done within a couple of weeks after the date. So a lot of people miss that on their events. And, I'll, and again, I'll send you the checklist that tells you all these things to look for. So that even if you've signed your contract, this might be the thing that you do and go back and look at it again. And then if you're going to go to the golf course looking for a golf course, you want to be organized, too. So you want to go in there with your professional stuff. As I said, the more professional you look when you go to the golf course, the better response you're going to get. And why is that important? There's a lot of golf events, and there's more being added every day. It's very popular because it's a good fundraiser, and it's safe, 
people feeling be outdoors. They're not going to be in there having to wear masks. So golf courses are tight and you want to get the best date. And they're going to give the best date to the organizations they feel can bring the number of golfers they commit to. Everybody thinks they're going to get 144 golfers. We do not. The average number of golfers last year was 120. But you can't go to the golf course and say, I'm going to get 120 golfers. And then two weeks ahead of time, tell them you got 60 because you'll never get back to that golf course again. So you want the golf course to feel comfortable, comfortable that you've got a plan together that's going to fill that event. You can, so I've got a checklist put together. What you want to do is take somebody in your committee, somebody who's real detail-oriented, and maybe you have to just look through the contract and go back and say, yeah, I looked at our contract. We don't have a rain date. I want to clarify this. And, and just make sure you've got everything covered so there's no surprises that are going to ruin your event the day, they, the day of your event. That's really critical. Make sure that you're covered. So I'm glad to get you this all on a checklist. If you And if you want, we can also set you up with rain insurance. I did that for a number of events last year, and this is really effective because it's not expensive, and if it rains, it covers the cost you take for rescheduling your event. So you have a lot of costs, could be like lost food and beverage or whatever, but you can set up rain insurance, and we're we'll glad to set you up um, if you're interested in finding out how rain insurance works. Now, I'm going to go now into how to attract players, then we'll go into how to attract sponsors. Okay. You have to have event day highlights. What I mean by that is when I take when I meet with an event for the first time, I say, Look, all right, tell me about what's going on before your event and what's going on during your event and what's going on after your event. So this is a live event coming up September 29th. And you can see before they even tee off, they got a putting contest that's insurance that we provided for a trip to the Ryder Cup. There's a helicopter ball drop. On the course, there's a ton of hole-in-one contests. Chance to win shirts by hitting the, the green on close on a par three hole. We're having qualifying for a million dollar shootout. Beer stations, liquor sampling. I bring a taco truck out and put, and put it next to the tequila station. Cigars. After the event, we have a reception. We have a shootout. Somebody wins a thousand dollars. So now this is a high end event, but what you have to look at is say, what am I going to put out there for people who have a choice? In any given day in a market, there could be 20 charity golf events. And you want people to look and go, you know what? Do you want to play in something like this, where it's a lot of cool stuff going on? Or do you want to go play in a tournament that's a four-person scramble that's got a box lunch and some awards? So you got to look and say, what's my event day highlights? One of the things you want to look at and uh, is the idea of format. And again, I just talked about it. 99.5% of the events out there are um, four-person scramble, box lunch or breakfast, and some awards. You need to break out and do something a little different. And I have, later if you want to, you can go to uh, Perfect uh, Perfect Golf, I'll tell you where to go, a Perfect Golf event. I have a number of recorded webinars that we've done before, and, and one of them is on, on golf event formats. So when you have time, you might want to listen to that. But here's an example of an event that went out and did something different. Folds of Honor, this will be their fourth year doing it. They were in a competitive market near Charlotte, and they said, look, we got to do something different. So instead of a four-person scramble, they took the golf course, and they're making 18 par three holes. They've done this every year. They have 18 hole-in-one contests with lots of different prizes. They have a shootout where every team gets to win one shot for $600,000. We provide the insurance. If the team makes it, half goes to the team members, half goes to the charity. They play six-person teams because you can do it when you're doing par three holes. They're done in three and a half hours. They've been sold out every year. Last year, they raised $120,000, but it's because they did a unique format. So, again, if you want to listen to my webinar on it, um, you can do it. So here's some of the ideas of things you can do that are different formats. You know, you could do the regular 18-hole golf, but then maybe put a shootout at the end to say, hey, come out to my event. Somebody's going to have a chance to win a million dollars. Or you can do nine regulation holes and nine par three holes. That's a nice mixture. You can go all the way to 18 par three holes. Or this is a great event in Philadelphia. They invented it. We didn't, and I love it. I have 12 events doing it. They're going to play golf in the morning, 18 regulation holes. But in the afternoon, about 2 o'clock, they're going to come back and have a nine-hole par three tournament. 
So people can play in the morning if they want to play a lot of golf, or they can play in the afternoon, or if, they, if they're crazy, they can play both. But then they invite everybody back for cocktails, awards, and that things in the afternoon. I love this format because it lets serious golfers play the full golf course. It lets casual golfers play in the afternoon, and then it gets everybody together. So just consider different options. We have packages put together on Perfect Golf Event that tell you how the insurance works, and we can design them to fit any budget in any market. You don't have to go high end. I've done some that's very inexpensive, but they just have a different format, and the response has been phenomenal. So if you want the, more information, I've got a webinar. Okay, it's on full. Uh, there's a place on golf. You go to Perfect Golf Event and click on the Resources tab. And that's where all the recorded webinars are. And there's a couple more that I'm going to talk about in a bit. But if you want to listen to any of them, just go to Perfect Golf Event, click on Resources, and under the Webinar tab, you'll see all the webinars. And that's actually where you can download all the handouts. Let's talk about contests and activities. So there's a couple things that you can do to get some momentum going for your event. A couple things I do is I have a preview day. Sometimes it's 60 to 90 days before the event. But for golfers who only play a couple times a year, I say, hey, if you're going to play in my event, I've set up at the golf course where they're going to have a special day for our people. You can go out and they're going to have includes golf, some lessons, a little breakfast or lunch, some discount because you're going to need some golf balls. And come on out and just, you know, play the golf course ahead of time. So when you come to the day of the event, you feel comfortable. I've loved this format. It really has worked well at getting people kind of comfortable coming to the event. And golf courses like it. And I've had the golf course say, if you can bring some people out, we'll do a revenue share. So they'll give us special pricing and they give us a little bit of a revenue share on anybody who comes out and plays. So it makes us, you know, not only gives a benefit to potential players, makes a little revenue. And it's just a nice way to build momentum for your event. Now, now I'm going to talk about raising money before, during and after your event. So I'm just going to give you some tips and then I'll direct you to a full webinar and fundraising contest. So before you tee off, if you haven't done an, au an auction, you might want to consider adding an online auction. We have a tool called Perfect Silent Auction, and it lets you set up an online auction just in minutes. And you can add donated items you have, or you can pull consignment items that we have, and automatically you've got a way to raise some funds prior to your event by having an online auction. It's easy to use, quick to set up, and you get a lot of feedback from people. And we actually give you a spreadsheet that lets you track things that are donated or consignment items so you can see how your finances go. Again, if I'm having an event, before my event, I always set up, if I'm going to have a live auction, a silent auction the day of the event, I just make sure I've got it set up in a nice area near registration where people can see it and they can do some bidding now, they can buy now option. But again, you're looking for things before tee off to engage your players, get some excited going before you tee off. We've got a custom glove program you can use, which is really nice. It's a great sponsor tool. Um, you can put sponsor logos on the gloves and players can pay for them, 25 bucks. Or sometimes I have sponsors say, just give it to them as long as I've got my sponsor logo on it. And we ship you more gloves that you need so you have all the sizes. And then whatever you don't need, you just ship back to us free. And then the last thing to think about, well, second last thing, is a golf ball drop. I just did one in Jacksonville. We raised, I think we netted about $16,000 from the ball drop. So if you want to do a ball drop, we're not involved in it at all except teaching you how to do it. But you sell numbered golf balls, and then you either can bring a helicopter in where you rent, or I've had luck bringing a fire truck. I go to the local firehouse, and I give them 500 bucks to bring one of their, their big ladder trucks out, and we drop some golf balls. I actually did one uh, in the fall with a drone. So you can have a golf ball drop. You sell numbered golf balls. The balls get dropped. They drop it on a pin, not on the green, because it would ruin the green. They put a pin in the fairway. Whatever ball's closest to it, that whatever wins, they, they win the prize. And it's just a great way to raise money and create some additional excitement, you know, before tee off. And then the last thing is have a putting contest. If you're going to have a putting contest, always have it before tee off and get it over with. You never want to have it during your event or after your event. It slows everything down. So add a putting contest. And then if you're doing contests, what you might want to consider, if you've been to these events where you register and then there's a table for raffle tickets and a table for mulligans and a table for the putting contest and a table for something else, um, I put everything on a super ticket. 
So for my event, for example, it's 100 bucks, but it gets you into the putting contest, a chipping contest, a golf ball drop, <clears throat> a raffle. You get two mulligans, a discount in the pro shop. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we're going to draw one name to take a shot for a million dollars. It's simple. Register, buy the super ticket. There's not five tables that they have to go through. And if you're interested, our artists can come up. This is one we did for another event. And they said, well, you know, I want to do a super ticket. So I want to have a putting contest and a raffle, some mulligans and a million dollar shot. And we just designed this for them. So you could, we'll design a custom super ticket for you. Again, it avoids those people standing in line with, you know, with 20 bucks here, 20 bucks here. It just slows everything down. So consider a super ticket. Now, once you get on the course, you got to want things to attract your players. So remember, and this is important. I think a lot of organizers miss this. Let's take, for example, how you pay for your contest. This is one of our, our packages. And I'm not trying to sell it to you. I will, but I'm not trying to. Just want to give you an example. So our tee to green package includes a bunch of stuff. A putting contest, hole in one contest, long drive, close to pin, shootout, and a million dollar shot. So the whole package is $15.75. That gives you everything, including signage. Now, what you do is you break it down and you sell it as sponsorship. So you have a putting contest sponsor for 500 bucks. Hole in one sponsor for the 10,000, 750. This bonus holes, you might have $500 sponsors. Long drive, two, whatever. So you can take and you raise money by selling sponsorship for those contests. So now you raise another 4,500. If you have a putting contest, you're going to have an entry fee. Maybe it's 20 bucks or you put up part of a super ticket. And so if 80 players are in, you raise another 1,600 bucks. So after expenses of the tip package, you've raised 4,500 bucks. And you've given the players some fun stuff to have. So that's how contests work. You, you get them so the players get fun and the sponsors cover your calls. And when you do hole-in-one contests, you don't have to necessarily do cars. You can do anything you want to put a value on. You can do a Kentucky Bourbon Trail, a cookie tour of Italy, Vail Ski Vacation, Hawaii Vacation. Anything you put a value on, we can write insurance on. And so that's what you want to do is have hole-in-one contests. And again, sponsors cover the costs. So say you want to do a hole in one contest for a Tesla. Well, <clears throat> that's worth 50,000. And so the cost of insurance from that from us is $1,000, but you sell that as a sponsorship. Now the players get a chance to win a Tesla and you've made some revenue. The sponsor covered the cost. Same with any of the other prizes. You know, you do Walt Disney reservation for 310, sell it for a sponsorship all day, and that covers the cost. So you add some contest. Oops, sorry back so people have some more fun and excitement. One of the things I added last year to raise some additional funds, and this is a nice trick, and it's, it really works well. What I said to the golfers was, look, you're playing in my event and you registered, so I really appreciate it, and you're going to get all the things I promise you. Golf, buffet, lunch, player gift. We got a $10,000 hole-in-one contest. We got some bonus prizes, so you get a couple extra things. But so that covers everything. But if you want to upgrade, if you want to bet on yourself, you don't have to do it. You can just stay there and you're in all those contests. No obligation. But if you want to upgrade it, pay me $100. And if you get a hole-in-one on these holes where we have bonus prizes, like a $500 gift card, you're going to get tickets to the Masters worth $12,000. Or instead of a range fine, you're going to get Super Bowl tickets. Or if you get a set of irons here, you're going to get a Pebble Beach trip worth $10,000. So basically we said, look, if you want to, you can buy it and bet on yourself. So if you get a hole in one and on this hole and you win the gift card, congratulations, you're going to win it. But if you bought this upgrade, then you're going to get tickets to Masters. What's interesting, is I introduced it last year, and at my events, 90% of the people picked to buy the upgraded contest. So, like, of course I want to go to the Masters. And that money is just basically 100 bucks that goes to your charity and just covers the extra cost of insurance. But it's a nice profit maker for you. So I call it the golf ticket. If you're interested, I have a whole bunch of contests. Again, I'm not going to cover them all today because we'll be here all day. But I've got a whole webinar um, called Top Fundraising Contests and Activities. And you can go again. If you go to a perfect golf event, click on resources, click on webinars, then you can see all the different contest ideas. I've got one called Golf Course Poker, Beat the Pro. There's you know a whole number of other ones you consider. Because people always ask me, how can I make additional money? And remember, 
people say, well, the guys, the, the men or women are paid, you know, they paid to play in my golf event. Uh, I don't want to charge them extra. Well, I would say that's baloney. 75% of the people who come to your golf event didn't pay anything extra. They became as a guest. So it's okay to try and get in their pocket and raise some additional funds. Immediately after golf, add a shootout. It's usually great. You can sell it as a sponsorship. It's a great way to end the day, have people take a shot for a million dollars or 500,000. We can go down as low as 100,000. But it's a great way to advertise your event. Say, hey, come out. Somebody has a chance to win a million dollars. Easy to add to your event. They're not expensive. And again, oh, sorry. And then again, the golf ball drop can be held before your event or after your event. Just a nice way to raise some funds. Now, last couple things about player packages. When you go out to advertise your event, you want to make sure that you've listed what are all the fun things the golfers are going to get. So the golf, food, event day, kind of, you know, the format that's interesting, prizes. <clears throat> you want to make sure you have a separate division for women. That's very important. And then you're going to say, look, the one thing we miss when we're advertising our golf events, and pick up this message. I want to make sure you get this. Golf events are a great networking thing. So when I go out to people, I say, come play in my event. We're raising money. But guess what? There's a bunch of other business people there, men and women that you want to meet and do business with. So this golf event is not just for you to go out and have fun. It's a chance to build your business. So bring some business cards and make sure you get around and introduce yourself. We miss the promotion of golf net events as a networking opportunity. And that's a big miss. The last thing I'll tell you is don't underprice your, your event. Don't go cheap. Make sure that you go and you say, oh, look, you know, if, if you're thinking of charge 100 bucks, charge 125. If you're thinking of charge 150, try and squeeze up to 200. It's hard to raise prices. And what I've learned is if I go out too low and fill up, I've missed an opportunity. So raise your, make sure you set a really good price for your event and don't be shy for doing it. OK, just make sure. Just trust me on that, because then you can add more things in. If you say, come on out, we're going to have a million dollar shot or we're going to have a bunch of hold of one contests, whatever it's going to be. You can add things that make it more attractive, but just make sure that you don't underprice your event. That's one of the biggest mistakes I see organizers make. The last tip I'll give you on players, <clears throat> for my events, I have VIP foursomes. I only have four of them because I want to fill the event up. I sell this out at every one of my events. Here's the deal. I charge a premium. It's two times whatever the normal rate is. So if it's if it's a a thousand dollars a team, it's two thousand dollars a team. But they get VIP parking and seating. They get a reception, a separate check-in area. I give them logo shirts. They have a I have a concierge designed to, assigned to these four teams. They all group them together. They all tee off around one, holes one through four. Or they double them up a little bit. And that person's got beer, Bloody Marys, cigars. They want them to go back and get anything. Need a sandwich? I'll go get it. And it's just special. And I tell you what, everybody who does it says, I'm in next year. Don't sell this VIP. Because people bring their clients out. They go, hey, Bill, Susan, we're going to have a great time. I reserved a VIP group. I'm going to tell you what, it's an unbelievably fast way to raise more money, have some fun, and it, you're going to make money because it doesn't cost you more if you double the cost to do it. You'll sell it out at every one of your events. Now, I have another webinar coming up at 4 o'clock today, my time on selling sponsorships, but I'm going to give a couple highlights here since this is a complete guide. guide. Um, make sure you offer a lot of sponsorships. Most events you don't offer enough. That's important. Have lots of sponsorships. You won't sell them all, but when you want to have a wide range at a different price point so people can say, I can't afford $1,500, but I can afford 1000 or I can afford 750 So have a lot of sponsorships. And you want to make sure that you build sizzle into your sponsorships. What I mean by that is, what are they going to get before the event? Logo on the website, in the press release, social media. What are they going to get at the event? And what are they going to get after the event? So you want to have things so that people aren't just going to give you their money if they're not thinking they're going to get business value out of it. So it's important for you to go to them and say, hey, here's what you're going to get. And you've got to put that into your sponsorship packages. So. For example, here's, and I'll be glad to send you my sample, uh, sample sponsor. I'll show you where to download it. But take a title sponsor. Here's where I've loaded in for my title sponsor. Co-branding. So it's going to be the Backstoppers Golf event, you know, uh, sponsored by or presented by Commerce Bank. 
They get three teams. Now they get the logo on the marketing materials. They get VIP parking. They get VIP seating. They get the tee off on number one. They get, I have signs made with their team on it ahead of time. So they come up, it says, welcome to Commerce Bank team. Here's the members. Get them some polo shirts. They get the front cover of the program. Now, what's interesting is these things don't cost me anything. Sure, it costs me a couple bucks, but the signage, the parking. And so you want to load that stuff in. And I've got three pages of sample sponsorships. So you can take this and basically change the price to fit your market and look at the number of teams that are included, and you're good to go. You've got a whole bunch of sponsorships pre-built for you that you can put onto your Perfect Golf Event website. Make sure you want to offer unique sponsorship benefits. I'm going to give you a couple tips here that if you do these, you're in the top 1% of all the golf events in the United States. Okay. Have a YouTube channel. I have them for my event, and I have videos promoting the event. I have a tour of the golf course. I have somebody talking about the contest. Hey, come on out. I have somebody buy a Tesla saying, hey, here's a Tesla. If you come out, you're going to have a chance to win a Tesla if you're the hole in one. But in addition to that, for my major sponsors, I say, look, if you've got a video about your business, your restaurant, your law firm, your landscaping firm, your bank, whatever it is, I'm going to send me a video, 30 to 90 seconds, and I'll put it on my YouTube channel so people can see it. What a great sponsorship benefit. I bet of the thousands of people that I've taught webinars to, I bet two do this. You know, I try, I've been preaching it for a couple of years, and it's just a unique way to do it. The other thing you want to consider adding to your event as another sponsorship benefit that will attract sponsors is maybe you set up a mini little trade show at your event. You know, golfers get there early, they go to the putting contest, they hit some balls, or you know, they're walking around. And so have some vendors set up display tables with samples and say, hey, you know what? You know, come over and here's my deli snacks, or I've got a you know cheese boards, I've got a, a barbecue station, I've got a liquor sampling station, whatever I've got. I got a I have massage people come out and give five minutes massages. And then I encourage them to give like coupons or incentives to say, hey, if you like that massage or you like that cheese or you like that cake, here's a coupon. Come into my business. Or here's my restaurant. Come on in. Get a free appetizer if you come into the business. It's up to the sponsors to drive the business in, but you've got to give them the place to do that. And, you know, some of my sponsors actually have offered take-home stuff. So I say to the golfer, hey, if you like this barbecue, I tell you what, go play in the golf event. When you're done, come by. And you can order a package of barbecue to take back for dinner tomorrow night for your family or maybe tonight. And, you know, you'll be a hero because they let you, you know, let you come play golf all day. Why don't you take a cake back or some cheese back or whatever it is? Be creative in what you offer the sponsors. And again, if you want, I've got a, I have a webinar at four o'clock where I'm going to be teaching again. But if you want a recorded webinar of a prior session, just go to Perfect Golf Event, click on resources slash webinars. And you'll see the one I have on how to sell more sponsorships. It's about a 40-minute webinar. Okay, make sure you've got a website. So use the power of technology. Hopefully you're using Perfect Golf Event. We found that golf events that use online registration with secure registration, credit card processing, so they don't have to put their credit card number down on a written form, raise more 22% more than other events without a website. Again, hopefully you're using us. You know, if not, use this checklist to kind of make sure that you got all the features. One of the features we added last year that was wildly popular is that we gave uh, the registrants the chance to pay any credit card fees. And so that was really popular. 80% of the players paid it. So that more of the money went directly to the nonprofit. Okay, we're going to go. I know we're going quickly here, but that's the way we will. And you can put it in the survey. I went too fast. Marketing. I've got a whole presentation I'll send you on marketing, but you want to make sure you've got all your marketing put together. Your website, save the date campaign, your brochure, email, social media, a press release. Let's look at some of these things. In my, in my marketing checklist, which I'll tell you where to download, it kind of covers all of this and tells you how to handle it. But let's hit some part, parts here. First of all, we talked before, you want to have a professional website. You want to have brochures. Remember I showed you that event before where I have the colors all look the same? Well, this is the brochure we do. You see it's a four-pager, has all our sponsorships listed, and we drive everybody to the website. And you want to put everything on a marketing calendar. I'll give you a couple of specifics in a minute. But 
put everything on a marketing calendar. That way you can look with your committee and say, hey, look, you know, the month of March, we don't have anything scheduled. Or the month of April, we're a little light on social media. So this is another spreadsheet you could use uh, to track your activity and make sure that you're doing the right stuff in terms of keeping on track for marketing your event. You want to use social media. If you're using Perfect Golf Event, if you're an Eagle or Ace customer, we'll design the social media images for you. And those are important because images have to be sized properly. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, they all use different sizing, and we'll provide those for you free of charge if you're one of our upgraded events. If you do an email, give them a template. Don't go out and say, hey, we do an email to your contacts. Tell them what to say. You know, tell them, hey, in the first email, tell them about the event with the link to the website and why we're raising money. And then the next email, tell them a little bit about the contest and activities, but tell them what to say. Give them text so they can just cut and paste it into the emails. And if you're not, if you're using social media, one of the most important ones to use is LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a top, is top business to business site. So make sure you're using LinkedIn and connecting with people on LinkedIn. So if I see somebody sign up for my event, I ask them if they're on LinkedIn. I tell them, would you mind putting on your LinkedIn for profile? Like I have 800 contacts in, in LinkedIn. So if I'm going to an event and I put there that I'm going to an event, 800 people see it. And if they want to connect with me, they can come to that event. So like I'll be at the PGA show this week and I put that out there and I've already got maybe 20 people who have booked appointments to see me at the PGA show at our booth. And so um, same thing works for LinkedIn. People ask people to go out there and promote it. You want to have a press kit, not necessarily because the press is going to um, pick it up because it gives credibility to your event. So I put a whole press kit together that's got an intro letter, a brochure in the organization, an event brochure, kind of a fact sheet with the highlights, who the contacts are, and I put it in one folder. And again, the newspaper is not going to pick this up, but it's an unbelievable sales tool. When I call our sponsor, I say, oh, by the way, here's our press kit. And I can't tell you how many people have said to me, you have a press kit? What kind of event is this? This must be a really well-organized, effective event, as opposed to some mom and pop event that doesn't have a press kit. So you can have somebody in your group that's willing to help you put together elements for a press kit, but have one. Again, you'll be in the 1% of all the events out there. You want to generate referrals. Do this, and you're, again, you're back in the top 1% club. Anybody who registers for my events, we call them. As soon as they register, within 24 hours, somebody from the committee calls them. Sponsor or player, doesn't matter. They're shocked when we call them because nobody calls anybody. We call them and say, thank you for participating. We're so excited you're going to be at our event. By the way, do you have any questions? If not, do you know anybody else who might be interested? Then we just ask them for referrals. And people give them to us. You don't have to give them anything. People go, yeah, I do. And I say, well, if I send you a link, would you mind sending that link out to your friends? No, i like my friends to come out that day. Or I know other businesses might be interested. Just ask. Now, testimonials. Another missed opportunity. I ask people who've been in my prior events to give me testimonials. So I say to them, like, especially as a sponsor, hey, you've been a sponsor of my event for three years. Why? Well, I turn, found out that my business goes up. Within the two weeks after your event, I get new customers coming in that were at the golf event. And, I, you know, how cool is that? I say, can I write that down and put it on the website? Yeah, sure. doesn't matter. Tell me about, tell, you know, some of my business it likes it. So how powerful is that for other businesses to see that somebody's had success at your event? But I would say out of a thousand events, maybe five people do it. So if you want to move to the front of the line, ask people for testimonials. You can add them to your brochure. You can post them on your website, but get testimonials. Now, in your event, again, we have covered a lot of stuff here, so I know it's quick, but i got to cover all the stuff. Now, get out again, get your copy of the presentation. But volunteers, people ask me all the time, how many volunteers do I need and what do I need them to do? Well, here's a spreadsheet we'll give you. It's got all the volunteer assignments, and it kind of tells you if they can be moved around. So, for example, if you have two volunteers checking all your supplies, going through the signs and banners, make sure everything's there, then you can move them to registration. So this kind of gives you a list of all the assignments, depending on what you're doing. I mean, if you're not having a raffle or a ball drop, you don't need so many people. But at least it gives you an idea that you can customize for your event 
And when you're done, you say, okay, it looks like I'm going to need 15 or 20 volunteers or more, but at least you have a list here that you can follow. For all my events, I also do a training manual. So my before my event, my volunteers get there, I send them a training manual that's customized to the event, tells them, hey, here's the day of the event, here's where to park, here's what to bring, you know, bring sunscreen, bring an umbrella, not just because it's going to rain, but because you might be out in the sun. Here's where all the things are located. We're having a chipping contest. This is what that means. If you're a whole of one witness, what does that mean? And I'll tell you what, your volunteers are very impressed. And the better volunteers are prepared, the better off your event's going to be to the people who attend. Now, this last section, you're going to have to go and listen to my whole webinar. I'm going to hit a couple of highlights, but I have a whole webinar on all the checklists that you have to have to run your event day. So in preparing your players, there's a lots of things you could do. Mainly make them feel comfortable by letting them know ahead of time the dress code. Are they going to have GPS on the carts? Are they bring their own range finders? Where to find the weather updates? They go to your website. Where do I find out if it's raining? Are we having the event? Bring cash. Arrive early. You know, put a rule sheet on the cart so they know. Make sure you train your volunteers. And then keep up the pace of play. You want to make your event special. People tell me that, that they judge an event on how well it's organized. And that's in terms of the check-in process. So make sure you've got welcome packets for every player. For my events, I set up a two-way radio. So when somebody pulls up, I have someone on the radio down by bag check. And Susie Johnson pulls up. We don't have to ask her name. We just look at her bag tag. And we see Susie Johnson. So on radio, we call up to registration. And we say, Susie Johnson's on the way up. And they pull her welcome packet. Now, how cool do you think it's for Susie to be heading up and someone say, Susie, we're so glad you could make it. Here's your welcome packet. Those are the things that move your event all the way through. Again, I want to read all these to you because I will send you the presentation. Same thing. You've got the pre-event checklist, all the things you need to do. And for my events, I actually, because I'm overly organized, I actually bring a chart that I go over with the golf course and I tell them where I want everything placed. So there's no surprises. I'm going to have cart clings. You're going to put them on the cart. I'm going to have pin flags, put them on the flags. Where's my beverage station going to be? Where's the bag drop going to be? Where's my directional signs? And again, on that point, make sure you have decent signs for your event. Don't do that stupid golf ball thing where you paste something off your laser printer. Your sponsors paid a lot of money. You know, it costs 20 bucks for a sign. Make sure it's cool. These are all the signs we do for our events, and we'll do them for you. They're beautiful. Their color and the sponsors will really be impressed. So the checklist, I'm going to tell you where to download are all my final checklists. So all these things are separate checklists, and you can go there. My webinar is full webinar. It's called Ultimate Golf Course Checklist, 32 steps. So all the checklists are there. So go to Perfect Golf Event, and you can go on the Resource tab, and you can listen to the webinars on Ultimate Golf Checklist. There's also a tab for handouts, so you can have all the handouts that we talked about. One last tip I'm gonna give you is try and collect all the information of people who are at your event. Remember that database we talked about? I wanna collect database information. So what I do for my events, I want everybody's name and their information so I can invite them to my future events. And you're gonna miss some of that because they're guests. So I do this, I have a drawing. So I have a form that says, come in, and they fill this form out. And if they fill it out, it tells me where do I, where do they want the photos from the event. I'm really kind of like, you know, a little sleight of hand here. And you don't want me to email the photos or mail the photos. So I pretend like that's really where I want the information. I'm going to do it, but I really want their contact information so I can add them to my database. But for my bigger events, I've actually added a drawing. Oh, let me go back. So I've added a drawing. So if they fill this in, I draw one of the forms, and they you win a year's supply of golf balls, which are basically 12 dozen golf balls. I've gotten 100% participation at my events for these forms. And I can tell you what, it's built my database by 40% because I had a bunch of names that I didn't have, but now I have them. So think about that for adding context. Last thing is remember, again, you're always building your database. So you want to be able to put them in your database and then classify them as players sponsors, volunteers, or maybe a supporter or some other classification. The last point is at my events, I'm always getting ready for the next event. So make sure you save the date, 
and have your, your event website. So for all my events in 2023, I already have my website set up for 2024. This event's being held in February, uh, I think it's February 7th this year, but I've already got my website set up for February 8th of 2024. So at the event, I'm going to tell everybody, hey, didn't we have a great event? If you want to guarantee your spot for next year, the website's up, go there. And I send that in the email after the event. And again, if you're using Perfect Golf Event, you can copy your stuff over in one click. So last couple of things, use our perfect photo gallery and upload photos. I want to go through this part. You can send this to you because I'm going to run out of time here. And then, all right, so this is my follow-up. If you have, well, I'll stay on through some questions. If you have any questions, you want to, uh, any of the handouts, uh, if you want to copy the presentation, email me, Paul at Perfect Golf Event, or support at Perfect Golf Event. I'll send you the full slides. If you want the handouts, you can just go to Perfect Golf Event, click on Resources and Webinars. You can download one zip file, all of the handouts. So if you have any questions, um, again, for anything, uh, uh, let me know. If you want to copy, somebody's asking if they want to uh, get in the sponsorship webinar. Um, it's going to be started in eight minutes. If you email me at Paul at Perfect Golf, and I still probably have time to get you that link. Uh, but otherwise, I'm going to get ready for that webinar. If you have anything you need, you need from me, just email me directly at Paul at Perfect Golf Event. I want to thank you very much for listening and just have a great 2023 event.